All right, boys and girls, welcome to math. Okay, so we are in this lesson. Now we've got our minute hand back. So that's pretty exciting. So we're gonna tell time to the hour and half hour. All of our hands are on our clock. We've learned about the hour hand and we learned what it means for the hour hand to be directly on a number. And we've learned what it means for the hour hand to be between two numbers. So we're ready to tell time with a full and solid clock. All right, so let's take a look at our directions. Um, and we'll just review this part really quick because we didn't bring out the big clock for this lesson. So each clock has an hour hand and a minute hand. We know that, right? The hour hand is the small one, the minute hand is the large one. Use what you know about the hour hand to write the unknown numbers. We know the hour hand has to be directly on a number for it to be o'clock. And when it's halfway between, we know it's 30. We know that 30 minutes have passed. That minute hand is then down to the six. All right, so let's look at this clock. We have our minute hand on the 12, our hour hand on the one. So we know it is one o'clock. The hour hand points to the, what number is the hour hand pointing to? points to the one, good. And the minute hand points to the, the minute hand is pointing to what? It's pointing to the 12. So when the minute hand points to the 12, when the hour hand points to the one, we know it's one o'clock. Now, in this case, now it is half past one o'clock. So when it's half past one o'clock or when it's 1.30, those mean the exact same thing, just two different ways of saying it. The hour hand points between the one and the two, and the minute hand points to the, and what number is that? Good, the minute hand points to the six. All right, let's go ahead and turn the page. All right. An hour has 60 minutes. And we talked about that when we made our uh, minute hand go around the clock. An hour has 60 minutes. Let's underline that because that's kind of important. So the clock shows 10 o'clock. So here is our hour hand, 60 minutes, bouncing around, all counting five in between each of those numbers all the way around to 60. The clock shows 10 o'clock here because the hour hand is directly on the 10, the minute hand is directly on the 12. So we write that as a 10 colon zero minutes, 10 o'clock. Now a half hour has 30 minutes, 30 minutes. The clock shows half past 10 o'clock. The minute hand has moved from the 12 to the six. So as before, if it's an o'clock, then the minute hand is on the 12. If it's a 30, then the minute hand is on the six. So in this case, it's no longer 10 o'clock because that hour hand is between the 10 and the 11. So now it is 10.30. Remember, the hour is still 10 because it hasn't gotten around to 11 yet. 30 minutes after 10 is 10.30. All right, so essentially in the rest of this lesson, all we're gonna do is look at the clocks and we are going to tell the time. So let's look at our first clock, the blue clock. We have our hour hand and our minute hand. The hour hand is halfway between the 11 and 12, and you should be looking in your book as well if you have it. And the minute hand is on the six. So when that's the case, what time is it? We're gonna start with the hour first. So the hour, when it's between the 11 and 12, it's still the 11 because it hasn't gotten to the 12 yet. So we're gonna write our hour first. So when you're thinking about telling time, you start with the hour. In this case, it's 11, then you make your colon, and then you decide. It's really gonna be one of two things only because in first grade, we really only need to know how to tell the time to the hour and to the 30 minutes. So in this case, only if, the, if the minute hand is on the 12, then it's o'clock. If the minute hand is on the six, then it's 30. So in this case, our minute hand is on the six. So is it gonna be o'clock or 30? Yeah, it's gonna be 30, right? Cause it's just like this one. Look at this one if you forget. So it's 11, 
30. And we write that by showing the hour and the minutes. The hour is 11 and the minutes are 30. That means 30 minutes passed when it was on the hour, okay? 30 minutes passed when it was o'clock. Okay, let's go now to the next clock, the green clock. Look carefully, what time is it? Start by looking at your hour, then look at your minute. What does your hour say the time is? It's between the 12 and the one. It's not on the one yet, it's just past the 12. So what time is it when that's the case? Look up here if you forget. What's the hour? Yeah, it's 12, it's still 12. Put your colon. And what is the minutes? Our minute hand is at the six, so it is 30, good. So what is our time? Let's say it together, it's 12.30, good. Okay, let's go to the blue clock, the next blue clock. Look at the clock, it's different, isn't it? It's different, look at that minute hand, it's in a different spot. When it's up at the 12, it tells you what the time is, and the hour is directly on the four. So what time is it when the minute hand is on the 12 and the hour hand's directly on the four? Start with the hour first. It, the hour is what? Four, good. Put your colon. And the minute hand tells us it's what time? It's o'clock. So we're gonna write our minutes as zero. Good, read the time with me. Here we go. Four o'clock. We read that as o'clock. Okay. Let's go on over here. We're gonna do some more. It says write the time. So you're gonna look at the clocks, okay? Look at this one, the hours between seven and eight and the minute is on the six. I want you to write down what time it is. I'll put your colons in for you. There you go. You write the time. Have somebody in your house check it. Oh, look at this clock. Now the minute hand is on the 12. The hour hand is directly on the nine. Okay, write your time. I'm gonna put your colons for you. Look back at our examples if you forget, okay? Use your tools, remember, always use your tools. They're very helpful. Okay, go to number six. Pay attention to where that hour hand is. Pay attention to where the minute hand is. I want you to do the rest of the problems here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and have a grown up check them, please. All right, let's go down to this one here. And you can pause the video if you wanna do them now, or you can go back and do them later like before. All right, circle your answer. Sarah goes to the park when both the hour hand and the minute hand point to the 12. What time does Sarah go to the park? Okay, so just like with story problems, sometimes it's helpful to draw pictures. So what I might do when I'm solving this, I'm gonna read it again, always read it a second time. Sarah goes to the park when both the hour hand and the minute hand point to 12. So the hour hand and the minute hand are pointing to 12. So I might wanna draw a little clock to help me so that I remember. So my hour hand is the little one and I know 12 o'clock, I know it's right up at the very top. And my minute hand, I'm also gonna draw a minute hand and my minute hand's gonna be right on top of my hour hand. So I'll put my little arrow things in so that I can see that they're both pointing right up to the top. Hmm, what time is that when the hour hand is right on the 12 and the minute hand is right on the 12? Hmm, when the minute hand is right on the 12, I know it's gonna be an o'clock. And when the hour hand is directly on a number, I know that's the hour. So if the hour hand's on top of the 12, the hour must be the 12. So if I look at my three choices, I know it's not gonna be this one because the hour hand is on the 12. So I'll look at these two. Okay, my minute hand is also right on the 12. So if your minute hand is right on the 12, it's not gonna be a 30, is it? Because my minute hand would be on the six. So what is your answer? Let's say it together, 12 o'clock. That's right, your answer is 12 o'clock. All right, good job. Okay, here we are with our puppet video. Mel goes to the park when the hour hand points between the three and the four. That's a clue, right? between the three and the four. And the minute hand points to the six. Ooh, we know from our minute hand over here, what time does Mel go to the park? Well, we've got lots of clues. We have our between clue, when we know when the hour hand points between two numbers, it's gonna be a 30. So let's look at our choices here. We have three o'clock, 
3.30 and 6 o'clock. Well, this isn't that hard, is it? Because if it's between two numbers, we know it's gonna be a 30, and so it's not going to be an o'clock, so there's only one possible answer, and it is 3.30. So, good job with that one. Okay, let's turn the page. All right, here we go. Number 12, Linda wakes up at 6.30. Draw to show what time Linda wakes up. This is important. This is the next stage for you is you're gonna have to like start to draw the hands on your own clocks. I want you to draw the hands on this clock to make 6.30. Be careful because when you're making it to the 30, you're not gonna draw your hour hand directly on a number, okay? So Linda wakes up at 6.30. Let's draw the minute hand first because the minute hand is gonna be the easiest. Where does the minute hand go when it's 30? Does it go on the 12 or does it go on the six? Right, it goes on the 12 and the minute hand's the long one. So I'm gonna draw my minute hand first. I'm gonna, I mean, sorry, draw, it goes to the six. And so I'm drawing my minute hand first. So I'm all set, there we go, good. All right, now I have to draw my hour hand. She wakes up at 6.30. So the hour is right there for us. Circle the hour, okay. So it's gonna go between six and another number. Now, if it was between the six and the five, then it wouldn't be 6.30, right? It would be 5.30. So what two numbers does it have to go between to be 6.30? Yep, you're right, it has to go between the six and the seven. So draw your one right there. And there you go, perfect. You just drew 6.30, awesome. Okay. Let's move on. David left school at 3.30. Circle the clock that shows 3.30. All right, use that minute hand. Use that minute hand. What number is the minute hand on when it's a 30? If you don't remember, go back and look. Use your tools. I'm gonna let you do this one on your own. David left school at 3.30. So, Circle the clock that shows 3.30. Well, let's go back. If it's a 30, the minute hand is on what number? Yeah, the six. So our minute hand is on the 12 here. So is it gonna be this clock? Nope, that clock is out of business. Okay, ooh, that's a 30. Ooh, that's a 30. There you go, that's a 32. So it could be any one of these three clocks. So let's see. He left school at 3.30. So the number three has to be somewhere in there if the hour is three. So this one has it between the three and the four. Okay, that could be. This one has it between the four and the five. There's no three there, is there? So the hour can't possibly be three. This one has it between the two and the three. Well, there's a three there, so hmm. But we know this one, definitely not gonna happen. So here we have it between the three and the four, and here we have it between the two and the three. So do you remember what we learned? We learned that the hour, it has to have already hit the hour for it to be that hour or 30 minutes after. So here it was two o'clock and then it moved a little past the two, but it hasn't gotten to the three yet. So the hour cannot be three. Here, it started at the three and it was moving on to the four, but it got halfway through and so it would be halfway between the three and the four. So David left school at 3.30. Circle the clock that shows 3.30. Which one of these shows 3.30? You say it out loud. Is it the second one or the last one? Yeah, it's the second clock, right? Because it was three o'clock and then it was moving on, but it only got halfway and then it was half past three and four, half past three and four, or in other words, 3.30, good. Okay, here, the hour hand points halfway between the two and the three, draw the hour hand and the minute hand, write the time. So we're just doing what it says here. The hour hand points halfway between the two and the three. So find your two, find your three, draw an hour hand that goes halfway between the two and the three. Just draw it in there, there you go. Now draw the hour hand. If it's halfway between, is it gonna be an o'clock? No, it's going to be a 30. 
There you go. Now write your number. So halfway between two and three means it's still at two for the hour and halfway shows 30 minutes have passed. All right, let's look at our last clock. Here's our clock, minute hand, hour hand. Choose all the ways that name the time on the clock. Okay, so is this half past seven? Is this half past six? Is it 8.30? Is it 7.30? All right, let's see, half past seven. So the hour hand is between the seven and eight. Hmm. So it's half past the seven moving to the eight. So yes, it is half past seven. Is it half past six? No, the hours move beyond the six. It's even moved past the seven. So six isn't even in play here. So no. Is it 8.30? Well, it hasn't gotten to the eight yet. It's not even eight o'clock yet. So can it be 8.30 if it hasn't even been eight o'clock? No. All right, how about 7.30? It's half past the seven, minutes on the 30. Yes, 7.30. Remember, half past seven and 7.30 are the same thing. All right, good job. And this is a good thing to do. You know, when you're at home, if you have an analog clock, um, take a look at it and see if you can spot it when it gets to the hour or the half hour. And, um, you know, try to practice telling time at home. Okay, here we go. Tell time to the hour and half hour. This is just like what we did. I want you to do each of these problems, one through six. And then this, of course, is our problem solving puzzle where it's going to give you a word problem and it looks like you're gonna fill in the clock. Draw to show what time Bill walks his dog. Yeah, so you get to draw your own clock there. So do all of this page, please. And then do these two are still clocks. And here's our review. So what is the sum? Write the number. Now yesterday I drew, or was it the day before? I can't remember. Well, anyway, I drew the sticks and circle pictures for you to help you draw. You have lots of space right here. I want you to draw the sticks and circle pictures. And if you don't remember what I mean by drawing the sticks and circle pictures, then go back to the other video and see where I did that for you. Or actually you don't have to go back to the video. You can just go back in your workbook or look at your old math paper to see how I did it and you do it yourself now, now that I've given you a refresher. All right, how many tens and ones are in the sum? Write the numbers, write the sum. So here you have to add this first and then your answer, you're gonna say how many tens and ones. Now, we are going to be making a new 10 here. That's your hint and your clue. You'll be making a new 10. Remember, when we made a new 10, we circled our new 10, and then we didn't forget to count it. Now that's if you're using pictures. Some of you may be, may be using place value strategy. We talked for a split second before we left about carrying a new 10 um, over to the 10 side, but we didn't go into it too deeply as a strategy. Though some of you may be using it as a strategy, maybe your parents taught it to you, that's kind of the way that we learned when we were younger. But any strategy you like, I want you to solve on your own. And if you have any questions or you're unsure, send me a note. You can send me an email. You can send me a note in Google Classroom. Right on this assignment in Google Classroom, you can send notes. If you have questions or you don't know how to do a problem, you can put in a note to me and I will respond right back to you, okay? And hopefully we'll have Zoom set up pretty soon where we can talk to each other. Excellent. Okay, that's the end of today's lesson. Good luck with it, have fun, and I will see you tomorrow.